All right, what's up, guys? New video today. We are doing some content on the common and rare tournament. Uh, basically, I'm going to be showing you five decks that are really, really cool that you can play in this tournament. I think that they're going to be very good. I've scoured, and I seriously mean scoured, every single common and rare card and have tried to bring you the best decks possible. Also, I'm trying to bring you decks that maybe other people aren't showing you to give you some more variety, some more interesting things to play. Uh, be, but here are five decks that I am going to be playing, starting off with Chaos OTK. Uh, this is just a huge, like, this is basically just like a uh, like a combination of various different engines. Uh, if, if there's any card here that you don't know, I can just let you know. Just let me know in the comments section if there's anything that you need to know and i'll go over it but basically this deck plays a variety of different engines it plays fabled cards which uh they are light fiends when they're discarded they special summon themselves or do, do something when they are special summoned uh when they are discarded so you've got fabled for example fabled um fabled lier fabled cat sith uh, this special summons itself this pops a face-up card so it deals with a lot of like there's there's a lack of destruction and removal in this format uh in, in terms of going second cards like there's no lightning storm there's no raigeki there's no rp's feather there's nothing like that so this is pretty cool because it can just destroy like a floodgate for example like dimensional fissure uh, if, if this becomes an issue i uh, will uh, dimensional fish is not going to work under this but uh yeah it'll just help you out various like face up cards uh plague spreader zombie is only a common so that's like a free special summon you just put something back special summon it summons a fabled monster and then we are playing those are the fabled cards uh then we're also playing dark world cards dark world cards also have effects when they are discarded but they have to be discarded by card effect uh so these can be discarded for cost but these have to be discarded by card effect but this for example brow lets you draw two cards you've got beige which special summons itself again you've got a combination of more drawing more special summoning it just you just keep going through your deck you have uh, four different engines in here you have the fabled engine the dark world engine the danger engine and the thunder dragon and and then you've got like a small thunder dragon slash chaos engine so that is kind of like the point of the deck here uh and then of course we do play various lights and darks like nikki tom this is a card that if it's discarded if it's sent to the graveyard from anywhere you get to draw a card so if you discard off a of danger you draw a card uh then we play the danger chupacabra mothman uh danger thunder dragon is another card that i'm playing in here uh, basically this just is a free plus one you activate it get two thunder dragons in your opening hand and now you can now you basically since you went second you would have usually started with six now you have seven cards in hand so when you activate the dangers it's less likely that uh, it's less likely that the danger will be hit and it's more likely that you will hit like a thunder dragon or something like that and then you put lights in the graveyard so your chaos stuff is all live uh, so like i said mothman uh, then we play Silva. These are kind of like the boss monsters of the deck. We've got Silva, Gold, and Lucent. These are three monsters that when they're discarded, special summon themselves, but additionally they have effects where if they're discarded by your opponent's card effect, they get additional stuff. Uh, like for example, Sil Silva returns two cards from your opponent's hand to uh, the deck. Uh, Gold allows you to target two cards. Your opponent controls, special summon them from the graveyard. I'm sorry, and then destroy them. Uh, but yes, you can do a variety of of things you can destroy two cards your opponent controls and then uh, this allows you to summon a fiend from your deck if it's discarded by your opponent's card effect and we play some chaos cards like chaos sorcerer and chaos emperor dragon you can mix the ratios up a little bit they're all fully available uh, we've also got some more dangers danger dogman uh, dangers for those of you that don't know you reveal them and a random card is discarded from your hand and then if you didn't discard the danger that you revealed you get the special summon for free and draw a card so it helps you go through the deck really 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 fast uh, so that's pretty cool and then they all have secondary effects like for example chupacabra if it's discarded you get to special summon the danger from the graveyard if mothman is discarded you can draw a card and discard a card uh, if the dogman is discarded all your opponent's monsters lose 1000 attack permanently and then we've got thunderbird which is probably one of the better ones uh, if this card is discarded you can destroy a spawn trap card your opponent controls but they all share that effect where if they are not discarded they can special summon themselves so they're all pretty cool uh, this is chaos emperor dragon most of you know what this does but it's basically this card is for those of you that know don't know 
This card is a rotted, so it's not as broken as it used to be, but still a pretty good card. And then we've got Thunder Dragon Duo and the variety of back row and front row removal. But yeah, this deck is extremely strong. It can just OTK your opponent very easily. It goes second, so it starts with six cards, and you can just keep going through your deck, through your deck, through your deck, and easily OTK your opponent. Uh, the extra deck for this deck is actually kind of decent, too. Again, if, you, if there's any questions you have, just let me know. I'll tell you which card it is. But yeah, you can OTK your opponent for fairly easily you have drag lubion which i can't believe is actually here it's just two level eights and you've got the spiders which are all pretty good you can rank up into the spiders using the smaller spiders uh, but yeah this card is very 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 strong this deck is very strong off to the next deck all right so the next deck we're looking at unsurprisingly is phantom spirals phantom spirals despite being hit pretty significantly on this list is still one of the better decks of the format uh so what they hit for this deck is they hit Phantasm Spiral Battle and they've hit the Unrivaled Tenyi and the Sea Stealth Attack and the Vishuta. So they hit four cards in this deck, but they only limited them. They didn't ban them. Uh, basically, all this does is just change the strategy of the deck. The deck is different from what it was supposed to be, but it's still very, very strong. Uh, you still have access to uh, a lot of the normal monsters, so you don't have to worry about effect negation because effect negation does nothing against you. So things like Fog Blade, things like, for example... Um, things like fog blade things like forbidden chalice they just don't do anything that's useful against your deck uh, we play those we play uh, some of the 10 yeast just a better one shathana is really really good in this deck because if your non-effect monster or normal monster gets destroyed you could summon it back and then destroy a monster your opponent controls non-targeting you've got vashuda which can bounce a card and then since we can't play the traps all of the traps we can play the equip spells and these all have different effects uh, but they basically you can just attach them to any non-effect monster which can be the mystery shell the uh, phantom spiral dragon or the any of the paleozoic cards you can't attach it to like the 10 you link because it's a non-effect it's not a normal monster but basically yeah, the, you can use the equip spells they give your monsters all kinds of different abilities and then you in the end after you battle you can summon the phantom spiral dragon uh, all of them have this one protects it from battle and if it battles you discard a card your opponent controls and then summon the phantom spiral dragon this gives your monster attack and lets you summon the phantom spiral dragon and burns for a thousand this let, gives your monster piercing and then you can summon the phantom spiral dragon and all of them re-equip to the phantom spiral dragon and you could just attack with that monster because it's obviously in battle phase. It's going to help you OTK pretty easily. Uh, so, yeah, it's cool. It's the equip engine. I haven't played the equip engine in a really, really long time. But they've kind of forced my hand here. Obviously, the most powerful field spell of all time. Uh, we've got Heavenly Dragon Cycle. This allows you to tribute a worm. Basically, any of these. And special summon a worm from your deck. Pretty good during the battle phase. So, you could just, again, it helps you kind of OTK. Uh, this is definitely, it's kind of like a mid-range strategy. It's like, there's a lot of trap cards here, obviously, that help stall but at the same time there's a lot of cards that can help you win in a pinch because you could do a lot of they could do eight thousand damage like out of nowhere sometimes because you have so many like cards that increase attack decrease attack you have cards that uh, swap out monsters also this is a graveyard effect that lets you search a tenny card so you can search for example uh the fist of the unrivaled ten you just banish search this uh, next we played three torrential tribute three paleozoic oleanoids all the paleozoic special summon themselves as normal monsters and uh, they all have cool effects, destroy spawn trap cards, uh, makes the current attack of a monster half. This lets you book a monster. This allows you to discard a Paleozoic, draw two cards. Uh, this allows you to discard and then banish a monster on the field. Uh, this is our only battle. This is like one of the best cards in the deck, but it's at, it's at one, so we can only use one. But it's cool, you just got to use it a little more intelligently. Uh, Phantom Spiral Power, again, not a bad card. It's just, it's not as good as, it's just not as good as uh battle but still very much usable and of course this drops your opponent's monster by a thousand attack and negates their effects so pretty cool gets you helps you get over stuff this is like a solemn judgment ish card when you control a non-effect monster and if you draw sea stealth and the field spell you you basically win like literally you win the duel if you draw those two in combination in this format because there's really nothing that can out that combination uh, yeah, even like MST, a lot of the backer removal, like they're just, you cannot out that combination because you can just banish the token. Whatever they activate is going to be null and void. You're going to summon the token back and you win. Uh, the extra deck doesn't really matter. You, you almost never go into it, uh, but it's here for decoration. But off to the next one. 
All right, the next deck we've got here is Yosenju. This is one that actually one of my subscribers, um, one of the subscribers recommended. They said, as soon as that ban list drops, they're like, oh, I can play Yosenju. That's going to be really cool. Uh, Yosenju is actually a really powerful archetype. It basically focuses on like a main three monsters, which is Yosenju, Yosenju uh, comma, one, two, and three. They all have pretty cool effects uh, where they can bounce things. Uh, they give you an additional normal summon every time you summon a Yosenju monster. So you can basically summon this, then summon this, then summon this. And you can just basically just keep going and going and going. These are all the Yosenju monsters that I personally play. You want to try to play a decent amount of them. Uh, usually you wouldn't play this many because you'd want to avoid... Uh, you want to avoid playing so many so you could use card of demise or something like that but it's not available here so you just play this uh, you have access to a powerful floodgate with in dimensional fissure it hurts a lot of the other decks like it hurts tenyes if you're playing like the tenyi matchup or uh, one of the uh, pendulum decks for example if they banish their monsters it doesn't go to the scales that can be really annoying for them uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't go to the top of the extra deck. That would be really annoying for them. You send you Whirlwind as a free card that you basically get off of. Um, you get off of the Sabu. You can bounce. It basically bounces things when your monsters are returned. Then you play Mystical Space Typhoon, Torrential Tribute. Again, a lot of these trap areas can 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 be altered if you really wanted to. And then we've got the Yosenju Swords thing, which is really cool. It lets you reveal two Yosenju monsters and then bounce that many cards your opponent controls to the hand. Again, pretty pretty cool card. Extra deck is mostly just rank fours and a couple of link monsters. This is another deck where you just you don't even need these rank fours. They're not totally necessary. Uh, yeah, this they're just completely not totally necessary. This can attack your opponent directly. It's cool that uh, basically number 82 is in every single extra deck and if you can get your opponent down to 6,000, you can win the duel anytime you want. Uh, so this is Yosenju's, again, a pretty cool deck. Also, you've got Kaiju's uh, that you can play just because you can bounce your opponent's cards so easily. But when you give your opponent a Kaiju and then you bounce it, you basically are putting that Kaiju back in your own hand, uh, which is pretty strong, I'd say. So you've got different Kaiju's that you can play. And uh, yeah, that's Yosenju. Let's move to the next deck. All right, next we've got Giant Ballpark. This is one of my favorite decks. Again, this is one of my favorite decks of all time. Um, I, I'm not completely settled on the extra deck. I'm still in kind of a building mode with this. I, I'm not completely sure what exactly I'm going to play. But it's again, it's another going second deck. It's a Giant Ballpark, uh, Giant Ballpark uh, Danger deck. So uh, Giant Ballpark benefits from putting their cards in Graveyard. And uh, generally speaking, the dangers can help you filter over to that. The whole point is, the whole deck revolves around this field spell, which basically, whenever one of your mon whenever a monster battles, you can send an insect to the graveyard and then negate that battle damage. Uh, you can do this when you attack. You can do this when your opponent attacks. You can do this for direct damage. You can do this for just regular battle damage. Whenever there's going to be battle damage, you can stop. You can reduce that battle damage to zero and then send an insect to the graveyard. But if you send a normal insect monster, then you can special summon up to three of that monster from your deck, hand, or graveyard, which is really, really, really strong uh, because you can basically send this to stop battle damage and then special summon three of them and that's 6,000 damage on board just like that and that basically most of the time can can end the game if you can get like three or four monsters on board attack attack and then activate this field spell summon three more you basically win most of the time this is again another otk deck uh, the benefit of this is that you can also play things like the tenyi monsters uh, you can play the tenyis the dangers you can mix a ton of different attribute uh, like archetypes that are available uh, obviously we play the normal monsters, some of the tenyis, they let you go into synchro plays because Edhara is pretty good. Edhara also lets you recycle some of the other tenyis. Uh, you've got the Goki Pole, which this card is another card that's kind of a part of the uh, giant ballpark archetype. If this card is sent from anywhere, like if it's sent to the graveyard, so including the field spore or any other way, if it's sent to the graveyard, you can add a level 4 a level four specifically insect monster to your hand and if it's a normal monster you can special summon it and destroy a monster with more attack than that monster so you can summon like sea squatter uh for example destroy a card or you can just straight up search mothman and just keep your uh keep your activations in hand going so that effect's pretty cool and then we've got a stecopede this is a free special summon if you banish an insect we play a gr an ample amount of insects that'll usually go up planetary pathfinder gets you the field spell and it's uh it activates on normal summon not on normal summon you just got to commit your normal summon to it but in reality we don't have a lot of normal summons in this deck the only normal summons we have are essentially just this and residence insect and that's about it uh, yeah, that's about it for our normal summons. Uh, then we play Residence Insect. If this card's sent from field to graveyard, you can add a level 5 or higher insect, which is usually going to be 
one of the kaijus that we play where did i put them right here the galdara just helps you get over stuff your opponent controls or it could just keep refueling your hand so it's no big deal also if this card's banished you can send insect to the graveyard which is usually going to be the goki pole again goki pole activates gives us a free special summon and on top of that a stecopede it sets up for a stecopede which is just more damage uh we play the dangers because they throw things into the graveyard uh, we play a variety of just utility tenyes that you can use again you can you can play this 100 percent tenyi and then ball just the tenyes in the ballpark but i'm just messing around with the dangers for now again this isn't really a final build a uh, danger dog man just more of these like dangers because they help put a bunch of monsters on board and then of course you play lightning vortex to out our opponent's board and the mystical space typhoon for the extra deck i've got 20 cards in here i'm not totally settled on which ones i'm going to use yet but obviously you've got the tenyi link monster imduct is really good it can basically destroy any monster just point it to your opponent's monster and it's very good in this format also, we've got this card, which is one of the only insect link monsters available to you. Uh, and it's actually, again, pretty decent. But again, this is sort of just a beginning, like, beta build. Uh, but this is definitely a very, very, very strong deck in this format. All right, guys. So now we're here at the very final deck. Uh, this is another, again, really, really good deck. This is basically pure tenies. The only card that really got hit on this list for tenyes is uh, the knight draco lich is technically hit and then we've got vishuda's at one and the fist of the unrivaled tenyi is at one so that's about it for getting hit but they're not like huge hits because you could just use uh, ashina to special summon the vishuda from your deck and then you can use Adhara to just put Vishuda back in your hand. So if you need to keep an Adhara, if you need to keep a Vishuda in rotation, you can keep it in rotation. The effects once per turn anyway, you're less likely to see it in your opening hand, but it's honestly, it's honestly not that big of a deal. So the gimmick behind the Tenyi is that they're all free special summons as long as you don't control non-effect monsters so you can keep special summoning special summoning them for free over and over and over a uh, knight draco lynch is a card that uh basically when all non-worm monsters that are in attack positions and have special summon from the main or extra deck are changed to defense position so it can help you basically wreck your opponent if you really wanted to and then on top of that they lose defense equal uh to their own original defense so uh that's pretty strong uh, yeah, that card's pretty good, and then a variety of these cards are pretty strong. All of the tenyes have effects uh, if you control non-effect monsters, which is pretty good. Good. Uh, we've got the field spell, which is if your opponent special summons while you control a non-effect monster, you can just draw two cards. All your non-effect monsters unaffected by monster effects, which again is pretty cool. You can't even, you know, being unaffected by stuff is always great. We've got mystical space typhoon to out nonsense. Uh, Heavenly dragon cycle is really good because you contribute and then special summon any tenny mo any worm monster from the deck uh, and that's one of the reasons i play phantom spiral dragon it is just it'll help you otk sometimes because you could just tribute um you could if you tribute a non-effect monster like for example if you tri tribute this monk you can attack with monk do a thousand activate this tribute your monk and then special summon the phantom spiral dragon the effects are negated but like who cares this thing is an uh, it's it's a normal monster anyway but you can just swing in for an extra 29 uh, damage it's really good it's just another option for you and then we play a variety of trap cards we play the torrential tribute because torrential tribute just awesome uh compulsory evacuation device and then we play some of the paleozoics i opt to play paleozoics over other trap cards because not only they have their regular trap effects but they also float which is uh, super duper useful we've got the paleozoic oleanoids uh, we've got the candina and then we've got the Dinomiscus, the three best Paleozoics. And then, of course, we play the Fist of the Unrivaled Tenyi for the extra deck. Again, it's it's the extra deck is kind of in a, in a sort of beta. But we play like the Cat Shark, which is really good. It can uh, target a level four or lower, uh, lower four or lower uh, rank four monster and then make its original attack become double. And you can combo that with number 82 which can attack your opponent directly, which is really cool. So it's 2,000 attack. You can summon this, make it 4,000 attack, attack directly. Uh, Diamond Crab is another really cool one. There's a lot of really, really cool combinations that you can do. Uh, this deck is definitely, there's a lot that you can do. Draco Lich is very powerful. Uh, yeah, it's one of the stronger decks of the format. If you'd like to see me cover more stuff for the common and rare format, if there's any decks that you are playing in this, uh, let me know in the comment section below. But thank you for watching. La, 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 la.